Today we'll be looking at MCP or Model Context Protocol. Now, MCP is an open protocol from Anthropic that standardizes the way AI systems can communicate with other applications. Specifically, it allows your LLM to connect to and control external systems and tools. So this gives your AI system access to a wealth of new functionality and data. There are already hundreds of MCP servers that give you access to a host of existing third-party systems. For more information, have a look at Anthropic's MCP documentation page. A link to it is in the description below. Now, where I believe the real benefits of this new standard uh, lie is actually in running them in enterprise applications, in private on-premise environments, <clears throat> thus allowing you to have natural language interface to your enterprise data. Now, this does have some challenges, though where the standards do actually fall down. But work is currently ongoing to extend the standard to allow authentication and authorization. And then the possibilities are endless. And as we are now seeing this standard being adopted by other companies in this space, for example, OpenAI recently introduced MCP functionality into their product. So we are seeing this throughout, certainly in some of the, the new AI based coding tools. One of the things that Anthropic has also done is actually created a whole host of MCP servers. Now these are open source and available on GitHub. And again, the link will be available in the description below. Um, there's a small bit of information above together with links to the software development kits for creating your own. But then if we scroll down further, we'll see links to actual MCP servers for a number of external systems such as Google Drive, um, web browsing, um, Slack, SQLite. The one we're going to be looking at today is the Postgres SQL. And we're going to be configuring our Google Desktop client to use this MCP server to access a, a local database using natural language. I'm going to be running the, the MCP server in a Docker container just because I prefer to do that so I have greater control and there's not a, a proliferation of files on my desktop. Um, if we have a quick look down here. We can see the configuration that we need to add. And as stated earlier on, I'll be using Docker. So I'm just going to copy and paste this configuration into the config file for Claude Desktop. The only thing that will be changing is the connection string to my local, local database. What you can do though, you can also run these as node applications. And again, the config is slightly different, but again, you can copy and paste that and just change the connection string to get where you wanted. Now we're going to look at this in a lot more detail. Now, if we flip over to Claude Desktop, so let's just start a new chat there. We can go up to settings, go to developer, and this will actually show the currently configured MCP servers. Here I have Postgres. Clicking that will show a little bit of additional information, such as the command that it runs, as well as the connection string. If I click on edit config, it will take us to the configuration file where all these are actually set up. So we can have a, a look at that file. So here we are, as mentioned, as a copy and paste from the GitHub page for the Postgres SQL Server. And the only thing that has changed is the connection string. You can actually define multiple MCP servers within this configuration. They will all appear under this high level MCP servers tag. But for the time being, we're going to concentrate on the Postgres. So if we go back again to the desktop, so let's ask it to describe the database you have access to. Now one of the things you will notice the first time you run this, it's determined it needs to use an MCP server. It will actually ask you for permission to run that and that's for security reasons. So I'm going to allow this for this chat. One of the things we notice, well, it tries to 
to something which is SQL light specific. And we know it's not SQL light. It's determined that it's now moved on and using Postgres specific functionality. This will take a little bit of time because it has it is going through and querying the databases and all the tables in there. So I will actually cut the rest of this out and take you to the results as they appear. And here we have the output appearing. So database overview. And it's broken this down into housing data. And I know this database very well. And this is the information that is contained in it. Crime data, census data, company, geographic boundary data. There's quite a lot of geographic data within this database. And it's categorized each one of those different types of data in there. It's also given us some data characteristics. So it's primarily UK focused, which it is. Date ranges and housing market analysis, crime pattern. So it's got quite a bit of information. So let's actually, if we flip across to another application. So this is PG Admin, which is a GUI front end. This PG Admin. And we come down here, it's connected to my database. I've got multiple schemas here. We click on census data. We can go down here and we can see some of the tables it's been referring to. The census data there. It's geographic information there. And let's have a look at the public schema. Again, more geographic information there. Again, I've got a, a single file or a single database table with all the census data there. I've got company information. This is more regional information, deaths related. We've got a whole host of information there. And most of that has been categorized in the description. So it seems to have done quite a good job. So let's ask for something a bit more specific. So let's create So Gravesham here is a geographic area, which is a, a Westminster constituency. So I've asked it to create an histogram. Once more, this will take a little bit of time. I will cut out um, the many queries that are being passed be back between the large language model and the database via the MCP server. And I will report back when it starts outputting the final output. So here we see some HTML code, also certainly some code being created now. So this will be the code to actually display the histogram I've asked for. And once more, I will cut out part of this creation just to speed up the video. In fact, I haven't needed to. It's here is the output total number of deaths. We've got quite a nice looking interface got some key observations peak mortality occurs in the 85 to 89 range which we can see there as well so fantastic just there in those few minutes we've done a demonstration of a database which is actually quite a large database with lots of different tables um, we've asked Claude to give us a description of the database and the data contained within it and also then to use some of that data to create a very specific output now this is just the beginning, as mentioned early on, really the tip of the iceberg. When you can start to configure MCP servers, multiple MCP servers, accessing different enterprise data sources, not just databases, but different data sources, and also joining on that information directly, you really can start to see the real benefit of this and start to output information without having to know technical details about that information. I've hoped you enjoyed that, that look at MCP, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you very much.